Hey. Hey, could you go away, please? <laughs> Hi, Andrew, Andrew, in front of the Manhattan Theatre Club, about to see... Our Mother's Brief Affair. Andrew, why is this the perfect Broadway show? Well, because think about the Broadway audience. you got your young gays and you got your women of a certain age that just want to go see some theater. And these women of a certain age want to remember the past affairs that they had. They have... Basically, the story is a mother, I believe she's about to die, so she makes oh, some... Oh, shit. So she makes I feel some... bad now about making that crack about old ladies. She admits to having an affair in the past and all things unravel and who knows oh. where it lands. It's written by Richard Greenberg, who also wrote the assembled parties. Yeah, he's a real family dynamic kind of writer. Very New York, very Upper West Side, very Upper East Side. Very like, oh, the apartment market. Same director as the assembled parties. I'm looking at something maybe assembled parties part two. We'll see an intermission of our mother's affair with the briefs. Yes, at the Manhattan Theater. Our mother Club. pulled down his briefs. And this is like every play you've ever seen at Manhattan <laughs> Theatre Club. It's a pissy memory play about family and revelations about family. And every word uttered has two meanings. One's hilarious and one's heartbreaking. The plot revolves around this, this aging Jewish New York mother and her two twin gay kids. One, the, the daughter, who's uh, uh, orbiting in outer space, who flew in from LA. The other, the son, who's so down to earth, he's practically six feet under. This is really the Linda Lavin show. When she's not giving lines, I want her to be featured. Yeah, you're looking over to where she's quietly resting to the side, wondering if she'll just wake up and say something funny. Yes. The Yiddish quotient is right on point here, just enough to make it New Yorky for out-of-towners and uh, just Jewish enough for those of us who live here. Early on, uh, the daughter flies in from California and she says that the airplane was stuck on the tarmac, kind of circling. So far, the first act is just doing that it's circling it's yet to take off however in the last five minutes what was that I feel like I didn't get I didn't sign on for this trip I, these tickets I'm just checking the destination now and I don't even know where that is in the last five minutes of the first act the plane drops a bomb on you and I don't know where they're going with this if it wasn't for the last five minutes I might just go home and have a pizza Second act starts with huge promise, but then suddenly mid act, it sort of circles back around the airport again, once again, and really fails to take off for me. Remember how we said the thing about the airplane taking off and we we're like, where are we going? Turns out we're just circling the airport and landing back where we started, getting off at the same gate that we boarded that plane at. Nowhere, apparently, is where we're going. And I was happy to finally land and get off that airplane. And there's a lot of cheap shots, a lot of easy laughs. On the whole, this play is very impressed with itself. Linda Lavin's portrayal of a woman perpetually on her deathbed is spot on. She gives you these eyes that say so much more than what Greenberg has put on the page. Exactly. Linda Lavin, round of applause for you, madam. Greenberg, you could have tried a little bit harder. I don't know. I just never really was invested in the characters. If it wasn't for Linda Lavin, I would give this a red light. Absolutely. But, but because Miss Lavin is involved in the show, I'd have to say a yellow light. Involved in the show? She is the show. She is the show. A I... yellow light for me as well. I would have more than a brief affair with Miss Lavin. I would I would lavish Miss Lavin with lovin'. <laughs>